Well, many artists and celebrities have come to Israel to show their solidarity in the country's darkest hour. With me in the studio, Yuval David is an Emmy Award winning filmmaker, director, actor and activist. Nice yes. to meet you, Yuval. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's really great to be here with you, but also great to be here in Israel. One of the things that I've been speaking about with so many Jewish people and our true allies who aren't here right now is come to Israel. The minute the plane landed, actually the minute I walked off the plane arriving in Israel, I felt like my anxiety was gone. And now that I know that I'm going to be returning to the United States, I slowly feel it creeping back you up again. the anxiety coming back. 100%. Yeah, a lot of people have said that to me when they, they come to Israel, they feel a sense of ease that they're not a, not alone, they're with their, with their people. Well, you know, uh, when I walk around the United States, I live in both New York City and Washington, D.C., and I'm speaking at events across the United States and Canada. I can't even tell you how many times people have hurled epithets at me merely because I wear stuff like this, Magen yeah. David, uh, around my neck. I wear it in my heart. And here, nobody has been yelling things about my Jewish identity. Meanwhile, though, we have rockets being fired at us from Hamas and Hezbollah, and we have the threats of terrorism, and it's amazing that I feel less anxiety here than I do in the United yeah, States. Yeah, it's quite a paradox, isn't it? Um, and, and you've really, you know, experienced a lot of the pain and suffering here. You've been meeting with some of the hostages who were freed, the, the families of the people who were still being held. Uh, you've met with wounded soldiers. I mean, you're, you're really uh, feeling what the country is going through right now. The level of trauma and grief uh, is hard to put into words. And it, it makes me sad because I was, I feel like I was trained for this moment. I was taught to understand what Bechol Dor Vador means in every generation and generation. We have these similar narratives that keep happening to our people. And because I was raised to be proudly Jewish and to proudly embrace every part of my identity, plus all the advocacy that I do. And, and being a storyteller, being an actor, a director, a filmmaker, and on the news as a news commentator is being a storyteller. And the meetings that I've been having with people, hearing their stories, one of the things that I make a point of never doing is to say, be strong. I, I just don't like that expression. Oh, really? You don't have to be strong. Mm. Be in the trauma. Be in the grief. Understand what it is. And then shape your narrative, understanding what your next step is. And for me to have been able to touch the hearts of former hostages and wounded soldiers and, and wounded survivors from the attacks is, I feel like I want to do whatever I can to empower them. And it, it has been heartbreaking to see the reaction around the world in, in places that you described, New York, uh, Toronto, uh, London, Everywhere. Paris. Every major city, every major but city. Do you, through your work, do you feel that you are getting through to some people? You are changing some minds? Of course, some people you'll never reach them, but do you think True. the people on the fence, you're, you are getting through to them? So during this time, I noticed, for example, on my social media accounts, I get a tremendous amount of hate messages, horrendous anti-Semitic messages across all social media, and I had this big drop in followers. But I've been seeing it creeping back up, and I'm starting to get messages from people who are sending positive messages and who are looking to me and towards these other influencers, let's call them, whether they're journalists or politicians or merely social media posters. Uh, asking for advice, trying to understand what to think, or even people are saying, tell me about your time in Israel. Who should I volunteer for? What organizations should I support? Which news outlets should I listen to? People are understanding that this situation is so complex and they want to understand who to follow. And that really is the incredible power of influencers. And I'm not only talking about social media influencers, I'm talking about socio-political influencers. Mm. And that's something that many people need to start doing. Do you trust somebody? Do they speak intelligently? Listen to what they say. And then listen to the other sources and as well. And make your own mind up. Make your own mind up. Right. But um, people are not reading books so much these days. No. They are getting all of their education from The statistics are something like 97% of people under the age of 45 receive the vast majority of their news from TikTok and Instagram. That's a pretty horrifying statistic. And it's an extremely complicated conflict. It takes a lot of reading, doesn't it? A lot of understanding. And um, I mean, you're a very successful um, filmmaker, actor. Um, you've got an Emmy, as I said. I do have beginning. Emmys and, and, and awards from international film and theater festivals. What that did is 
enhance my ability to be a storyteller within the Jewish activism, within the Jewish advocacy, and also beyond that, being an Israeli activist and advocate, and somebody who speaks out about what being a human rights, social justice, and civil rights warrior and activist really should mean, mm -hmm. to focus on the values. So I can take the issue out of the story and say, well, when I'm in an argument with somebody, which happens often in panel discussions, or when I'm put on panels on the news with people who completely disagree, not only with my opinions, but with my identity, to be able to say, well, let's talk about the values. Do you care about women's rights, LGBTQ rights? Do you care about democracy, freedom of the press? Do you care about everybody having access to education? Do people need to have health care? Focusing on the values, and then if we can agree on the values, now let's reinsert the issues. Mm. Let's reinsert the words Israeli, Palestinian, Hamas, uh, IDF. And if their values all of a sudden change merely because we're speaking about Jews, then we know that they're anti-Semitic. Well, quite, and I, I was going to ask you about your industry specifically likes to kind of jump on the bandwagon of all the cause, causes you just and listed. And we're seeing, we're seeing very this Very much bandwagon. with the progressive causes. Um, there's been very little or no solidarity with the, the victims of, of rape, uh, torture, um, horrific atrocities. I find it horrifying. I find it disappointing. And I have been speaking up as, a, as an activist in support of Israel and the Jewish people in support of democracies and support of the values I believe in for a long time. And there have been people who've said to me, saying, should I be concerned that this will impact my career as an actor, as a director, as a television host, as a news commentator, if I'm so demonstratively Jewish, if I'm so demonstratively supportive of Israel, even though I can criticize Israel, of course, I'm also American. There are things that I criticize about the US, but I'm not anti-American. Mm. So those things uh, have been disappointing in the Hollywood industry when people were so outspoken about the women in northern Nigeria or the women in Iran uh, and they're outspoken about hashtag free Palestine. Uh, not so much with the women in Iran I have to say. Well they got quiet. Yeah. They were at, at first because it was a popular hashtag mm. but we also have to think about these are also people that were doing the ice bucket challenge merely pouring a bucket of ice over their heads not knowing what the point of that was or they put Tide Pods in their mouth or a teaspoon of cinnamon to try to see like what is the most popular TikTok dance that they can do. Are those the people we need to listen to. Our problem is that hashtag Am Yisrael Chai is not really such a uh, popular hashtag. Mm, yeah, that is the problem. Well, on a lighter note, um, there are signs that more and more Jews are moving to Israel. Uh, now is the time to, to buy real estate. Uh, <laughs> now is the time to invest in Israel. We're seeing so many people understanding that times of war are times for us to support ourselves. We have focused on Or La Goim. It's a Zionist and Jewish principle to help other nations. But we've done so much help for other nations that we've created choshech, we've created darkness for ourselves. Now's the time to do light unto our own people. And that includes not only Jews, but our allies, people who are going to be on the right side of history. So invest in Israel, invest in the Jewish people, invest in the people who are truly against anti-terrorism, against terrorism, that is. So. Now is the time to, to move to Israel. And, I, and the I think it's an amazing feeling. And the country is really healing, isn't it? You can really feel that the country is I, going through a process. You feel the healing, but you also feel the grief. I mm. have described it as feeling all of the emotions in one day. Uh, and it's, it's overwhelming. But where there's comfort is that we're all feeling this together. We're, we're, we have this solidarity and people are really trying to focus on unity and what it really means. Mm -hmm. There's this beautiful feeling. I'm starting to get anxiety and feeling nervous again, honestly, right now, because I know that next yeah. week I'm going to be back in the US. Well, you're welcome to stay a bit longer. <laughs> I, I think I just, I just might. And I hope to help inspire you other people. You saw how people. long Michael Rappaport stayed. He kept saying, well, I was supposed to be here for one week and I've already been here for three and a half half weeks. Yeah, I keep hearing that. Well, it's great to see you um, and have a safe journey you. back and stay safe. Thank you, Yuval David. Thank you.